I can already tell that this is going to be a very difficult video for me to do, almost as difficult as wrestling this behemoth out here. But it is still March. We're still in that March mad mess area, that month of reviews of 3D printers where I get to even go back and re-review 3D printers that I've been using. And lately, my experience with the DaVinci Color has been rocky. And I'm afraid that this entire situation is going to end on a down note. So before we get there, I want to talk about the reasons why we need to have full color 3D printing available to us as a 3D printing community. Now, when I say full color 3D printing, I don't mean multi-material. Multi-material is also, I feel, an important technology that we need to figure out and get dialed in and nailed down. But having access to full color, being able to make minuscule, discrete changes one right after the other, like, like multi-material just can't do, and being able to do that anywhere that we want. Having access to that technology in the Da Vinci Color has been, to me, eye-opening and exciting, and I want to convey to you just a little bit of why we need that. So the reason number one is stupid stuff. I'm not going to mince words. I want this so that I can do fun stuff, but I want to keep in mind that the category of stupid stuff that we can do is extremely broad. For instance, we could do full color already painted gaming miniatures so that when you play your D&D or your board games, those miniatures already have full color on them. And that would be super duper cool. But we could also 3D print the boards. Imagine if I had this technology back when I did the Royal Game of Ur. I could have done the full color versions of those boards with just a flat surface that I then colored on, and the board would be more or less the way it should have been. As it was, I used, well, quite frankly, the same technique that everybody uses when they do 3D printing to kind of put those patterns in relief in the print. And while that works, being able to have access to do it with photographic details would have been a game changer for me, and it would have been absolutely amazing to have that available. It wasn't available at the time, but I really wanted to explore this with the DaVinci Color, and I think that having full color 3D printing would open that out. There's also just toys. Imagine if your everybody's printing Baby Yodas this day. Well, what if your Baby Yoda was already with the black eyes and the green skin with a little bit of tint on the ears and the brown shirt, and you didn't have to paint it, you didn't have to change filaments, you didn't have to do nothing. You could get that full color Baby Yoda with extremely good details out of your 3D printer in one shot. This, this would be a game changer. And admittedly, none of these things are going to change the world, but they would be so cool and would be such an amazing dimension to 3D printing that we haven't even considered yet. The second idea is um, insert tab A into slot A. Imagine being able to have multi-part prints where the tabs and the slots and the instructions for it were printed either on it or maybe you even just put down a, a very thin sheet of plastic, print those instructions on there as a temporary thing. Embedding the instructions for how to use your useful prints and how to assemble them on the print, in the print, as part of the print, I think is something else that we need to explore and consider. It's something that I think could change 3D printing and distributing 3D prints with multi-part prints. Now, the last thought that I have for how I would use full color in a 3D print involves using it in conjunction with multi-material printing. Imagine if I had multi-material one nozzle or one feed or somehow outputting your regular plastic PLA pit, whatever, your other nozzle extruding a conductive filament. And with that conductive filament, we're putting circuit paths 
through our 3D print. And not just like a circuit where it's all flat. We do that out of necessity, but now we have a 3D printer. We could do this multi-layered. We could do this multi-dimensioned. We could have our parts. We don't have to mount them on a flat surface. We could mount them on the back and on the front, wherever it makes sense. And in conjunction with that, the circuit diagram, the put resistor here and timing circuit here and whatever is printed on the part so it's easy to put them all together without any external reference material. And I recognize that this idea is very similar to the previous idea, just with an added function. But I felt that that right there could change the world so much that it merited its own category and its own discussion. So there we go, three very important reasons why I feel like we need to explore full color 3D printing and have that available to us as one of the tools that we use to make home manufacturing a reality. I feel like this past year, I've had a lot of ambitious plans for the Da Vinci Color that the Da Vinci Color didn't want me to be able to do. I modeled a genie, full color, and I was going to make a video about it, but when it printed, the magenta ink just started dying on me. Actually, the magenta ink dying ended up being a blessing in disguise because I hadn't quite gotten my color correction right. And so you can see here on the genie, this part was printed with the magenta, and the rest of it wasn't. It came out looking much better. So I'm glad that it failed, but still, when it failed, then I had to contact XYZ support and talk about, hey, what's going on here? My magenta says it's at 100%. And it's it's acting like it's empty. And we back and forth on that one. And I finally got a new magenta. I, I wanted to do a video about this modeling process, about this print. But then that whole fiasco came in and it just kind of fell by the wayside. But that experience of having the blue that it was printing not look anything like the blue that was on my screen made me want to explore color correction. And I started printing these tests these test objects for the Da Vinci Color. My plan was to take pictures of them next to uh, traditionally 2D printed versions of this so that I could figure out, well, how do I need to adjust the colors to get it from that to this? And I recognized that what was going to happen was that certain colors were going to drop off entirely because, yeah, this thing kind of uses a grayish filament as its base. And so we can't get pure white. And so yeah, parts of the color gradient would be would be missing. But I thought if I could just get it corrected so that what it could print, it could print, I could take this information and I could hand it back to Da Vinci Color and, and they would be able to make it better. And about this time, I also realized that uh, if I took this same object and I, I made it smaller but taller, tall enough that it would print the whole time, that I could overcome a problem that I was having. See, I, I took this, the Millennium Enterprise by Ferdinando Hernandez, aka a disc online. This is a great model. It's a mashup of the Starship Enterprise and the, the Millennium Falcon. But you'll see that while you're printing it, and I printed it standing up, there's a little bit of red here and a little bit of red here and a little bit of black here and a little bit of red here. But while it's printing, it's it's doing occasional blue and I've run into problems in the past where if one of the print heads isn't being used for a while, it dries out. But if I printed this object with it, then it would ensure that all of the colors were going the whole time up as it was going, and it would result in a successful print. But right after I printed this, you'll, you'll see this print. This was the first print that I printed with that new magenta cartridge that they sent me. As soon as this print finished, and again, I want to point out, little bit of red, little bit of red, little bit of red, and a little bit of red here. That's all. That cartridge went from 100% to 0% at the end of this print. And it took me three months of talking with XYZ Printing to figure out what was going on. And I never figured out what was going on. I just sent them my old cartridge, and they sent me a new one. But see, that's kind of the frustrating part. My experience lately has been every time I try to do one print with this printer, something fails on it. And 
In this case, in, in the case of it telling me that it's at 0% when I know it could not possibly be because I only did one print, if this machine didn't trust its faulty chips more than it trusted me, if it said, warning, I think this is at 0%, your print might fail if you do this, are you sure and let me do it? I would have been printing with this. I would have been giving you guys great videos about this. I would have been excited about this printer still. But because it didn't, I wasted my time. XYZ Printing wasted their ink because I had to send it back to them practically full. They lost money. I lost time. You guys lost great content. And more than that, I got so frustrated at this machine. And it sat there for three months. I couldn't use it all for want of a single faulty chip in it. I, I want to emphasize that this machine isn't all bad. It's amazing. It's a well-engineered printer. It's a beast of a machine, and it does what no other 3D printer can do. Doing full color, even attempting full color at this price point, is ambitious and the fact that they pulled it off as much as they did was wonderful and amazing and definitely definitely praiseworthy however i think that now i can come up with a couple of reasons why this machine isn't the success that i was hoping it was the first reason is that it never was that good to begin with it was okay. It was amazing for what it did. But the fact that the feed filament going in wasn't white, it was this kind of dingy gray. And I think that that was just the best that they could do, meant that the results of this were always kind of dingy. And I feel like it could have been corrected for. At the very least, they could have stopped trying to do colors that they couldn't actually do, which might have resulted in like this strange flat curve and some colors just kind of all meshing together, but at least it would have been true and it would have made it more applicable in more situations. Now, when viewed on their own, most of the prints and most of the colors are pretty good, but if you're looking for true color out of it, it just, it just could never quite do that. It did full color, but it wasn't true color. You know what I'm saying here? So the results were never spectacular. The second problem with this machine was the inks dried out too fast. I mean, the inks dried out if you did not store them properly. I lost inks at the beginning for that reason. The inks dried out if you didn't pull them out of the printer after a print soon enough or started the next print soon enough. I lost them because of that as well. The inks even dried out while it was printing. Like I said, I had to come up with a way to overcome that. And the problem is that they took the head, the full color head of this machine, and mounted it on the same carriage as the filament extruder. So while it's extruding the filament, the inkjet heads are sitting there in the open air drying out. And if they get used on that layer, then fine. They get regenerated and, and, and they get to flow just a little bit. But if they don't, then if you have a print with large areas that are either only one color or don't have any color, then your color printer is going to just dry out while you're using it. And I think that that could be overcome. I think that we already have the technology to overcome this. All they would have to do is separate the heads and, and have maybe put them both on the X. We call it Ibex. It's a thing. We, we do this already. We have one head on one side and one head on the other side. And we bring one out and we use it. And then we put it away and we bring the other out and we use it. And we put it away. And if it had something that kept the ink where it was supposed to be the whole time covered up and clear, we could even store it in the printer the whole time because it would always be parked out of the way, and this wouldn't be a problem. Unfortunately, this machine doesn't and can't do that. So it, it's possible that that is the limit of this hardware, and if we want to see that happen, it would need to be in a future machine entirely. In fact, 
we there is a new emerging technology, the multi head printers that have detachable heads that it will just reach and grab the one that it needs. And if one of those heads could be an inkjet printer, how cool would that be? This experience has made me think that I, I'm, I'm not done with this printer. I'm not going to say that I'm never going to use it again, but I am going to say that um, I think we need to see others. It's It's time for a little bit of space. And more specifically, I need this out of the way because there is other technology that I want to play with. I've got a a palette that I started playing with a while ago, but but can't use because, well, my wife only lets me have two 3D printers in the house at a time, and uh, this one's been sitting there doing nothing for a very long time. So I got to get this out of the way and make room so that I can play with some other technology that I'm. I'm looking forward to being able to tell you about and do really cool things with. So for now, I think I'm going to be taking this machine and just shelving it for a little while. It, it's not, I'm not throwing it away. I'm not getting rid of it, but uh, I'm giving it a little bit of a break and experimenting with some other things to see where it can take me in the future. But that's it. That's my experience with the Da Vinci Color. And I think for now... While this isn't the end of the Da Vinci Color for me, this is definitely the end of the Da Vinci Color playlist that I've been making because it does feel like this is the end of this journey for it. I think I know what this machine is, and I've had the ups, and I've had the downs, and I know when I jump back into it what to expect. But I hope that this isn't the end for full color 3D printing. I want to see this technology continue to grow, continue to flourish. I hope that the DIY community picks this technology up and runs with it because I, I think that it can and it will be transformative for 3D printing when we can take and put any color we want anywhere on them, regardless of geometry, regardless of resolution that we're printing it at. I, I see possibilities for this and it excites me and I want to see more of it in the future. Just not necessarily immediately with this box. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, if I mentioned anything in this video, you'll find a link to it in the cards and you should check that out. Did you know that I'm social? I've got links to all the socials and you should stop by and say hi. I really kind of enjoy it when that happens. Big thanks go out to my direct backers. And if you want to know more about how you can become that, there'll be a link right here that you can check out. And as always, I want to remind you safety first because I care about you and I'll see you next time. Oh, that's interesting. Classic one there.